Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I think we're just going to wait to see if there are more attendees coming through. I see the numbers are still growing, so let's just give a minute or two before we start. Just want to make sure if you can all hear me. If you can hear me, can you just please raise your hands? Okay, I think we can start. So, welcome everyone. Um, if you joined me with the previous history webinar, um, you know me. Uh, my name is Ilse Stickling. For those who haven't been with the, the first history webinar, so welcome to all of you. I hope you're all surviving the lockdown. Guys, so before we start with the webinar, just some basics. If you are struggling to hear me, please make sure that your audio is on and that your speaker volume is turned up. During the session, you will be automatically muted. Then should you have any questions, I think the session is going to be a full hour again. I would advise you to please type your questions in the question box on the right hand side of your screen. Then we can still extract the questions and give you back answers later on. Right on the right hand side of your screen, you will see that there are handouts so you can download this presentation. It is available both in English and in Afrikaans. If you are struggling to download the documents, please in the question box provide us with your email address so that we can send you the handouts per email. Okay, then it's very important if you have any subject related questions or so forth, please don't hesitate, type it in the question box and then we will come back to you with answers to your questions. Okay, then you might also hear during the session the voice of my colleague Kimberly Britz. She's just helping with the webinar on the organizing side. So if we experience any problems or so forth, you might be able to hear her voice as well. Okay, so then for the Afrikaans learners, I will translate some of the difficult um, terminology and so forth for you in Afrikaans. But then please also make sure that you download the Afrikaans um, PowerPoint presentation 
under handouts. Okay, now those who attended the previous session, remember that we started to um, speak about pseudoscience in the 19th as well as the early 20th century, that it was a very popular thing during those times to do um, biological experiments to um, try and promote the idea that some human species are superior to other human species and that many countries throughout the world actually implemented um, these theories. They had scientists working on these theories to, to promote their race ideologies and ideas. And then also in most of these countries to promote that white people were superior to other indigenous people that they came across. Now, there are many um, examples like South Africa and apartheid, um, Australia with the Aborigines, um, the United States of America, if we think about the Native Americans, the Mexicans, um, the African Americans with segregation and so forth later on, and then also Nazi Germany and the Holocaust, and there are a number of other countries where there was a huge focus on ethnicity and which ethnic groups are superior to other groups. Now, obviously, the science was based on theories that were not really, could not be really proven. Um, but nonetheless, many of the governments um, decided to, to work with these theories and to implement these theories. And this led to a lot of racial discrimination policies in many of these countries. Right. So the case studies that we are focusing on is Australia and the Aborigines and then Nazi Germany and the Holocaust. Now, I'm going to focus in this session a bit more on Australia and the Aborigines, because if you remember back to your history syllabus in grade nine, you did the Second World War, where you also focused a lot on Nazi Germany, and then obviously the prosecution of Jews and other people as well. Right. So for the Afrikaans mense, the gevallen studies waar op ons focus vandag is dan um, Australië en die inboerlinge. So in jou handboek sal hulle hoofsakelijk praat van inboerlinge, jy mag ook achter praat van die Aborigines. So dit is die inheemsbevolking van Australië en dan praat ons ook van Nazi Duitsland um, en die Holocaust. Goed. So dit is die gevalle studies waarop ons dan gaan focus. As jylle onthou met die vorige sessie wat jylle daar bijgewoon het, die webinar, het ons gepraat oor die sedewetenskap wat geïmplementeer is in verskye lande in die tijdperk in die laat 1900s, vroeg 20ste eeuw en soan, dat baie regeringsgewerk het met wetenskapelikes en met hulle theorieën um, waar hulle biologische experimente gedoen het om te probeer bewys dat sekere rasgroepe meerderwaardig is teenoor ander rasgroepe en dat dit dan vooral van toepassing was op die wit mense, dat hulle meerderwaardig was as ander groepe. Goed, now if we look at Australia, the indigenous people of Australia is called the Aborigines. So vir die Afrikaanse mense in julle handboek sal julle die term sien in boerlinge, Daar is glad nie fout om jy om die term Aborigines te gebruik nie, jy kan dit ook gebruik. Raag. So the indigenous people of Australia, the Aborigines. Now British explorers and settlers arrived during the 18th century, that's the 1700s. Remember a century count is always one higher up than a year count. Right. Like we live today in the 21st century, but it is 2020. Right. So the 18th century, referring to the 1700s. So British explorers and settlers arrived during the 18th century in Australia, and they found the Aborigines already living there. And this is with most of the exploration of other countries worldwide, where Europeans um, came across new countries, um, many of them referring to a lot of these countries as the new world that they have discovered. But in all of these countries, they would then also find indigenous people living there. And then obviously one of the, the policies they try to, to implement to um, live in these countries and settle in these countries is to try and get across the idea 
that these indigenous people are inferior to them, whether it's based on race, Christianity, or whatever the reasons that they are inferior. Now, the original Aborigine population at that stage was between 300,000 and 1 million people. Right, so that is just an estimate. Then Aborigine people lived in small communities, but they all had common social and religious customs. And again, very much like the Native Americans, these people lived very close to nature. They respected nature. Um, and obviously, um, not the same level as Western development, and therefore also reasons why they were considered as inferior. So in Australia, the inboerlinge, right, um, Britse ontdekkingsreisigers en settlers het gedurende die 18e eeuw, dus die 1700s in Australia aangekom, en hulle die inboerlinge daar gevind, en in daar die tijd was daar ongeveer tussen 300.000 en een miljoen inboerlinge wat daar gebleid. Dit is redelijk moeilijk om die, die precieze getal te bepaal, want daar die tijd was daar nog nie um, census geneem of soens van een van van die populatie of die bevolking nie, so baie van die getalle wat word maar geskat. Hulle het in klein gemeenskapies geblei, maar ondanks die klein verskillende gemeenskapies waarin hulle geblei het, het hulle die selfde sociale en religieuze gebruike gehad. Okay, now the impact of the British on the Aborigines. Right, now, to start with, Britain began to colonize Australia in 1788. Now, to understand this is that in Britain, um, the poor people were mostly convicted of minor crimes. And so in Britain, you had a very, very large um, jail population, overcrowded prisons. And one of the solutions thing was to take these prisoners take them to Australia and help them, um, help the government build the new colony of Australia for them. So from there on, you will find that a lot of people talk about Australia being founded by criminals. Okay, so in a sense, if you look at the, the system today, these were not really criminals in, in many of the, the crimes that they committed or so forth. Um, in the sense that we would regard crime as today, in today's terms, right? Many convicts were therefore sent to Australia to help build the colony. The British encountered the Aborigines who lived there for about 50,000 years. Again, about 50,000 years. Um, if we look at things such as archaeology, oral history and so forth, where there's not written documents, we can again only make estimates on the artifacts and the oral history and things that we can actually find um, information on. Now, the British regarded the Aborigines as a subhuman species, not on the same level as themselves, and they subjected them to various brutal and discriminative policies that led to their decline in numbers. Good. So, Britannia had begun om Australia to colonize in 1788. And in that time in Britannia, was mense vir geringe dinge gearresteer en in die tronk gegooi, vir al jou arm bevolking. Um, as die mense het met vandagse misdade vergelijk, was dit eindelijk nie rarig misdade gewees nie. Maar daarom sal baie mense vir jou sê, dat Australia begin het of gebouw is dier misdadigers. Recht van die tronke was oor bevolk gewees, in Britannia gedurende daar die tijd, en een oplossing van die Britse regering was om hierdie kriminele te vervoer na Australië toe, so dat hulle kan help daar om aan die kolonie te bou. Goed, nou, toe die Britte gearriveer het, um, of aangekom het in, Brit, uh, in Australië, het hulle afgekom op die inboerlinge, of die aborigines, en hulle het hulle beskou as minderwaardig teen oor hulle self. Um, en daarom het hulle ook dan verskillende beleide geïmplementeer wat baie brutaal was eigenlijk tegen die aborigines en wat ook um, geleid het door discriminatie tegen die inboerlinge van Australië. Ja, the impact of the British continue. Hostile relationships developed between the British and the aborigines. 
like in most countries where Europeans try to settle and take over and so forth, um, obviously the indigenous people will receive smaller parts of land to live on, and this will eventually create conflict, especially when you have people settling who have a superiority view of themselves. Right, now many Aborigines were forced to live in reservations. Now this is also not um, uncommon during this time because you would see that with the Native Americans in the United States of America that would also force in reservations. You would see that in segregation in apartheid South Africa as well, where people were forced into reservations and so forth, right? And in these reservations, large numbers of people died due to starvation. Now, the main aim of segregation is so that people could develop themselves and so forth, but then the governments would actually put them in areas where there are no resources or very little resources for them to help support themselves or help develop themselves. Right, so these reservations in Australia as well would then lead to um, hunger spreading in the reservations and people dying of hunger. Now, what is also terrible about the British arriving in Australia and meeting the Aborigines is that they actually implemented a sport hunting the Aborigines. So they would host parties, hunting Aborigine parties, where they would hunt and kill Aborigines for sport. Right. Then also, some Aborigines were deliberately poisoned. And over the next 150 years after the first settlements, there were wars and massacres, and as well as the introduction of European diseases that would then lead to a decline in the number of the Aborigines. So this would eventually lead then to the rapid disappearance of Aborigines, especially in Southeast Australia. So a verschrikkelijke, um, onvriendelijke verhoudings wat ontwikkel het tussen die Britte en die inboerlinge van Australië. Baie inboerlinge is geforceer om in reservate te bly, Dit is pas nie een nieuwe ding in die tijd nie, dit het ook gebeur in Zuid-Afrika met segregatie, later met apartheid, dit het gebeur in die Verenigde State van Amerika, waar jou um, inheemse Amerikaners geforceer is om in reservate te gaan bly. Um, en baie van hulle het nie die hulbronne gehad in die reservate om hulle self op te hef, of um, in, in basis in armoede verval en dan ook in hongersnoek gestaaf. Dan wat nogal baie erg was in Australië is dat hulle aborigine of inboerlinge jagpartijkies gehou het, waar hulle dit as sport beskou het om die inboerlinge te jag en dan ook dood te maak. Dan het um, van die inboerlinge is ook um, moedswillig vergiftig en oor die volgende 150 jaar sien ons afname dan in die inboerlinge getalle en dit is ook maar as gevolg van oorloof wat plaasgevind het, massamoorde wat plaasgevind het en dan ook die bekendstelling van Europese siektes, um, wat ook maar in ander lande plaas gevind het. Dan um, het het vooral in die suidoosterlijke dele van Australië geleid, dat groot getalle van um, inboerlinge gestarf het. Ok, then let's look at pseudoscience in Australia. Now, Australian authorities justified their actions with pseudoscientific race theories. Now, if you remember my previous presentation, a lot of this was based on theory that could not be proven. And if they were proven incorrectly, they would just ignore it and still promote it as being the truth. So, again, this was a common practice during the late 19th, early 20th centuries. Um, so, it was implemented in various countries. And this is why we still today have a massive issue with racism and racist problems throughout the world. Um, because this is something that, if you look at the year counts, did not take place that long ago. So many people are still set in many of these mindsets. Right. Um, so the Australians regarded the Aborigines as biologically inferior to themselves. Many Aborigines were subjected to scientific investigations 
Um, for example, they would um, do anatomy investigations. They would look at the, the brain size, the brain capacity. Um, they would look at the size of the head. Um, if you've got a bigger head, you are smarter than other people and so forth, right? Um, so ridiculous experiments they were doing to um, even on, on facial um, characteristics and so forth, where they would find people as being inferior to themselves. It was not, they were not considered equal to white or yellow ra races. If we speak about yellow races, this would then include mostly your Asian populations that at this stage was also regarded as smarter and a more superior species than black people throughout the world. Right now, they even went as far in Australia to say that Aborigines were closer to apes than to humans. And again, they would do a lot of biological um, experiments. They would do a lot of um, comparisons to actually say that the Aborigines are biologically inferior to the white people. Now, government efforts to stop white racial suicide and racial decay in Australia also became issues. Now, remember, whenever they start a settlement somewhere in the world, the majority of people that will move there as the first settlers would be men. So there would be obviously a shortage in women. And where there's a shortage in women, you can imagine that there will be sexual assault, maybe sexual relationships developing with indigenous populations and so forth. And this could then lead to mixed races. So obviously this is one of the issues that the government had to deal with to make sure that people um, in Australia do not interbreed with the Aborigine people to keep a superior white race in Australia. So they needed to stop racial suicide with a declining in white superior numbers in comparison with um, Aborigine or mixed numbers. Then also racial decay, that actually refers to people um, intermarrying or having inter um, relationships with other racial groups and so forth. And then obviously the superior white race is decaying and becoming a, a less important or um, inferior race. Then white women, for example, after World War II, a lot of them lost their husbands during the war and many of them were encouraged to go to Australia to marry their white men and so forth. And then also, um, this is a baby boom area of um, era after um, the Second World War, is that people um, were promoted to, to have more children to actually build the white races. And this did not happen in Australia, only this happened elsewhere in the world as well. To start to build up the populations again of the millions of people were killed in the world wars as such. Right. Then also strict immigration policies. When Australia started, they would allow yellow race people into Australia, but now this also had to stop because they were concerned about the decay of the superior white race in Australia. So they had to make the immigration policies much stricter to only allow superior white people coming into Australia as such, right? Then also after the Second World War, there were a lot of um, children being orphaned. Um, so the British government in Australia will then um, bring in orphaned children from Britain to try and build up the white population in Australia as well. Good. So in Australia krij ons die sedu wetenskap wat ook geïmplementeer is waar hulle biologiese um, experimente gedoen het om te probeer te bewys dat die um, wit ras baie um, meerderwaardig is teen oor die ander ras groepe. Um, en dan is hulle die die inboorlinge blootgestel aan vrede experimenten goed is ook om te bewys dat hulle minderwaardig is 
gehen wir die blanke, blanke Setlage von Australien ähm, als Socks. Gut, so alle bei vorher wird gekauft, nein, die Brain Kapazität, nein, die Größe von die Kopf. Alle so gekauft, nein, die Größe von die Mies. Nicht um zu bepaul, ob jij minderwaardig is tegen oor die meerderwaardige mense in een specifieke groep. Um, dan die inboerling is ook minderwaardig beskou tegen oor die wit mense, wat myself as meerderwaardig beskou het. En dan wil ek ook verwijs na die geel mense, wat ook meer meerderwaardig is tegen oor die inboerlinge. Na die geel mense verwijs hoofdzakelijk jou mense van jou asiatische lande, um, wat in daar die tijd as slimmer beskou is as jou swaard mense recht oor die wereld. Goed. Um, die aborigines of die inboerlinge staan in Australië vergelijk als apen. Dat hulle gesê het, hulle is nader aan aapspecies als wat hulle aan die mense specie is. Volgens hulle biologische voorkomst in alle rande theorieën wat die bewijs kan worden. Nie. Goed, nou die regering het dan verskye methodes probeer implementeer om zeker te maken dat die blanke ras of die wit ras in Australië nie tot de selfmoord kom nie. En dit beteken nou nie dat hulle visie selfmoord pleeg nie. Dit beteken nou net dat hulle um, dat minder in getalle word um, teen oor die inboerlinge. En om die meerderwaardigheid te behou, moet daar meer wit mense wees as die inboerlinge. Anders word dit een bedreiging veile. Rechts, so, hulle het verskye methodes probeer implementeer om die meerderwaardige ras te behou. So hulle het byvoorbeeld Blanke vrouwen na die Tweede Wereldoorlog um, beveel om meer kinders te Dit was die babyboom era geweest in baie lande na die Tweede Wereldoorlog. Miljoene mens het gestaar in die Tweede Wereldoorlog. En selfs weer die wees wat hulle mans verloor het, is gemotiveer om na Australië toe te kom, dat daar meer vrouwen in Australië teenwoordig was. En dan ook baie weeskinders wat hulle ouders verloor het in die oorlog is gebring na Australië toe, om um, dan daar verder te bouwen aan die witbevolking van Australië. Goed, so die regering het beleide en planne en allerhande soeke goed geïmplementeer om zeker te maken dat die wit mense suiver bly en dat hulle meerderwaardig bly in Australië. Raag, dan ook die immigratie beleide het baie, baie streng geword, um, met ander woorde waar hulle voorheen meer ook was vir geelgroepe om in te kom na Australië toe, het hulle dit van toaf ook begin bepaak, om, om seker te maak dat dit blankes is, wat inkom in Australië in. Right. Then a very important part, a very sad part of Australian history, um, refers to the stolen generation. Now the stolen generation were children that were removed from their families, between 1869 and even as late as the 1970s, not that long ago. Right. Now, the stolen generation referred to children, um, we use the word half caste children, and these were children of mixed origin, mixed Aborigine, and mixed British. Right. Now, what they tried to do was to integrate the stolen generation, these children that they would take away from their parents and their homes, and they would try to integrate them into white society. Right. So traumatic events for children, for their mothers, as well as extended families. Now you can imagine it is very traumatic for children, it is very traumatic for the mothers and the extended families to um, obviously deal with, with, with the issue of losing their children, where the government will just come from to the houses to actually take the children away and to remove them and to put them either in foster homes or in um, societies where churches and so forth would actually raise these children and try to integrate them into white society. Now children were put mostly in institutions or they were put with foster families and then they were also subjected to name changes, cheap forced labour in many instances, poverty and sometimes even sexual assault or abuse in these new families. 
So hier is ook praat as ek dan van die gesteelde generatie. Nou dit is kinders van gemengde afkomst, waar um, hulle gemengde bloed het tussen die inboerlinge en dan die Britse settlers. En tussen die tye van 1869 en selfs die 1970s, wat nie so lang terug was nie, is hier die kinders weggevat van hulle maas af, van hulle families af, En een mens kan dink dat dit ongelooflik traumatisch was. Dit was traumatisch vir die maas gewees. Dit was traumatisch vir die families gewees. Dat die kinders net weggevat word. Traumatisch vir die kinders. En dat die kinders dan by instellings geplaas is. Of by um, anneem ouwers. Of, of so aan. En dat hulle meeste van die tijd dier, dier kerkgroepe groot gemaakt is. En westerse dinge aangeleer is so dat hulle, hulle self um, kan verwit in die toekomst en, pla- en, en weg doen met hulle inboerlinge um, gebruike en so meer. Goed, so baie van die kinders in die gesteelde generatie is blootgestel aan naamsveranderinge, wat hulle name verander is. Hulle is um, geforceer tot goedkoop arbeid. Hulle moes betaak hier as bediendes in die huise gewerk het, of op lande gewerk het, of wat ook al gedoen het. Um, baie van hulle in armoede verval, en dan is hulle soms ook blootgestel aan seksuele misdrijwe. Goed, so, een mens kan dink, dit is, is, is ongelooflik traumatisch vir een kind, om net so weggevat te word van sy ouwe reis af, um, om geïntegreerd te word in een ander samenleving, op basis geforceer te word. Okay, now there are some um, photographs of the stolen generation on the screen. So on the left hand side, you can see that there's a newspaper article um, that homes are sought for these children of mixed origin. And what is sad is that many of them did not receive loving homes, but homes where they were still ill treated and had to do um, the domestic work in the houses and things like that. Right. Um, so there on the right hand side, you can also see that many of them and, and, and the left um, bottom, that many of them were in institutions where they um, fell under um, the church groups there, where they were raised there, they had to um, change again their names. And obviously they had to um, get education according to white systems and they had to be integrated into a white society as such. Okay, then assimilation programs to breed blackness out. Now, in 1915, they introduced the Aborigines Protection Act. And then there was also the Aborigines Protection Board to make sure that these laws were implemented. Now, in the 1930s, the two most important Aborigine administrators was Dr. Cecil Cook and A.O. Neville. Now, they proposed solutions to the Aborigine problem. Now, it also almost sounds like the Nazi Germans that wanted to find a final solution to the Jewish problem, right? So they also now wanted a solution to the Aborigine problem. And they proposed the following, to say that they wanted to reproduce blackness out under the stolen generation. Now remember the stolen generation, children of mixed origin, that is taken away from their homes, their parents, to grow up in a white society, to be raised by fostering by foster parents or to go to orphanages run by churches and so forth and to actually westernize them in customs and language and all of those types of types of things right now one of the things to reproduce blackness out is to encourage children from the stolen generation to intermarry with the white community now, this is not a short-term solution. This is a long-term solution because eventually in generations to come, there's a possibility that the blackness could be bred, bred out of the Aborigines, of the half guys children, and that they could actually then become a white generation in the future. 
Right. Um, not the only country to implement this. A lot of other countries also implemented this. If we think of another um, prominent country, we can think about Nazi Germany as well, right, who wanted to reproduce the Aryan race. Now, again, they started to use unscientific theories and eugenics, where they did a lot of research and experiments and came up with ideas on how they are going to achieve this. Maybe there are other genetic uh, methods or so forth to breed out blackness even um, faster than what they anticipate, but obviously a lot of research going into that. So over time, generations would breed out blackness and the Aborigines will then eventually disappear. Good. So assimilation program on swart blood out to fasier under the um, inboerlinge, under the gesteelde generatie. Now, that gesteelde generatie is kinders wat verwijder is van hulle ouwer huise af, um, weggevat is van hulle ouwers af, hulle is in pleegzorg geplaas, of hulle is in instellings geplaas, waar hulle dier die kerke, um, waar sies groot gemaakt is, en in die absolute westerse kultuur, hoe is groot word, school gaan, nieuwe tol gebruik moes aanleer, en so meer. Reg, um, nou in 1915 is daar een inboerlinge beskermingswet gestig en dit was in samenwerking met die inboerlinge beskermingsraad gewees. Nou twee baie prominente administrateurs daar van die inboerlinge was Dr. Cecil Koek gewees en dan ook al oor Neville gewees. Nou hulle het besluit, hulle wil probeer om oplossings te vind om swart bloed uit te faseer uit die gesteelde generatie uit. Nou, jy kan vir jouself denk, dit is nie een ding wat oor nacht gaan gebeur nie, dit is een lang termijn oplossing wat oor een paar generaties gaan plaasvind. So met ander woorde, een van hulle idees was dan dat die kinders van die gesteelde generatie moet introu onder die wit mense in, so dat oor een paar generaties die moendlikheid bestaan dat swart bloed heeltemal uitgewis kan word. Goed. Nou, om dit te bewerkstellig, is daar baie eugenetika wat moet plaasvind, daar is baie theorie waar nou gekyk moet word, um, om dit succesvol te implementeer en seker te maak dat dit kan werk. So, weer eens die lang terwijl plan was om dit oor een paar generaties um, te probeer uitwis, so dat jy sit met een blanke generatie wat ontstaan het dan of uit, uitgewis is uit die gesteelde kinders uit, gesteelde generatie. Okay, now if we look at Nazi racial ideology. Now if you remember back to the grade 9 syllabus, um, you will remember that Germany was a totalitarian state under Adolf Hitler who first made himself the Chancellor of Germany and then became the Führer of Germany, the ultimate leader of Germany. Now, obviously, Nazi Germany was a fascist state. Now, a fascist state, militaristic, anti-communist, um, there's only one leader, and that leader um, is the only leader that should be listened to, and it's a society based on fear. Um, it's a dictate, it has a dictator as a leader. And then obviously there are no individual rights um, within a fascist society, right? Um, so you have to adhere to leadership decisions. You are not allowed to have a different opinion from government um, or else they would be severe punishment for you as a citizen, right? Now, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party believed in a superior Aryan race. Now, that refers to a pure white race. So, these people would be strongly built. They would be healthy, usually tall. They would have blonde hair. They would have blue eyes and obviously be very intellectual. Right. Now, Again, this is not something that you can create overnight because obviously there are Germans 
with dark hair and dark eyes and so forth that are also pure Germans. But this is something that needs to be bred out um, over a few generations as well. So this is a long-term solution that people should develop this ideal Aryan race. So the systematic development of an Aryan race through eugenics and the interbreeding of these features as well. Now at this stage in Nazi Germany, you would find a lot of propaganda posters where they would also try and promote this idea. And on these posters, you will see this healthy blonde family with um, who's sporty, who's healthy, um, who has all these physical um, features of being blonde with blue eyes and all of these type of things, right? Now, in Nazi Germany as well, you would have a lot of inferior people according to the Nazi um, people, like Jews, for example. Remember that Adolf Hitler used the Jews as a scapegoat that they were behind the Second World War, um, behind the First World War. They, he actually used the Jews for a number of things that went wrong. Even um, the Great Depression before the Second World War, that um, obviously the Jews were behind many of the bad things that was happening in Germany. Then also other groups like the Gypsies or the Roma people, um, the gypsies, a very free society that did not necessarily have the same beliefs as the Nazis or the same strict lifestyle as the Nazis. Then also homosexuals. Obviously, homosexuals could not reproduce um, an Aryan race in future. So obviously, they were not welcomed in Nazi Germany as they could not effectively contribute to a population, creating an a, a ideal racial population um, in Nazi Germany. Then also Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, it is a Christian group who um, uses the name Jehovah to refer to God as the original Hebrew scriptures. Um, refer to God's name as Jehovah. Now, obviously the Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus is the king. Um, there is only God um, and Jesus as the rulers of the world. There should not be um, nationalism. They will not hail Hitler. Um, they will not praise Hitler. They will praise God. And for this reason, they would refuse to do the Heil Hitler. They would refuse to sing the national anthem. They would refuse the symbols and the flags and whatever, um, because they only answer to God. Then communist, the Nazi party was extremely anti-communist. Um, so communist obviously then also put in labor camps or in death camps as such. Then obviously also Democrats, because this was a fascist state, um, did not want or did not allow any opposition to take place. Um, so obviously people criticizing the government and wanted democracy and so forth. Remember the Weimar Republic was already a failure. So Adolf Hitler did not want anything to do with Democrats as well. So these people were all regarded as inferior and in Nazi Germany, they would be put into death camps or labor camps or so forth, right? Now, Nazi Germany used a lot of racial propaganda and this propaganda um, would eventually lead to the Holocaust taking place. Um, in other words, the final solution, getting rid of especially the Jews, but also other inferior people who would stop the Nazi ideologies from taking place and breeding then obviously the, the Aryan race of Germany. Okay, then just some photographs. In this one, you can see that German children in Germany were taught racial ideology as a subject. 
So the teachers in these classrooms would put up photographs and pictures with different facial profiles. And then obviously they would teach them what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. What are the features of typical Jews? What are the features of the ideal human race? Um, so they would have them in these categories. There in the, the pictures on the board, you can see that um, it's from the right hand side, the facial is from the, the left hand side and then from the front. And then the teacher will teach them the differences between all the biological facial features that would allow people to discriminate against other groups as well. Okay, there you can see other teaching methods and propaganda methods as well. In the first one, let me just get my laser pointer. In these two, you can see an achtjähriges deutsches Mädchen. In other words, this is an eight-year-old um, German girl. There you can see the, the physical features from either sides of the faces, what they look like. So they would say, okay, they've got um, sharp noses, they've got long uh, blonde hair, they've got blue eyes, for example. So these are um, the typical features that we want in German society. Right. Then on the right hand side of the screen, you will see an achtjähriges Juden Mädchen. In other words, this is now an eight year old um, Jewish girl. And they try to show the biological um, emphasis there as well that the, these reasons make them inferior. For example, the form of the nose. Many times they would say that Jewish people have big noses, obviously the darker hair, then obviously skin tone, um, a lot of different facial features and so forth that they would find fault with. Um, on this side, you will find a siebenjährige deutsches Junge, it's a, a, a seven year old German boy. And then you can also see the ideal characteristics or features of this boy. Um, obviously, the blonde hair, you can look at the nose and the eyes and the mouth, and they would then just regard that as being superior. And then on this side of the screen, a sieben jährige Juden Junge, a seven year old um, Jewish boy, and then they will also show the features there. And this was used as propaganda to educate German learners in schools and the public and so forth that there are differences and these differences make it okay to discriminate against people, that this is the ideal and this would lead to an Aryan race in future. This is not the ideal. These people will lead to racial decay within Germany. Okay, now most of you will know <clears throat> Notice the singer. Do you recognize her? Okay, so yes, this is Taylor Swift. Now, Taylor Swift is today regarded by the neo Nazis as the perfect Aryan race. Now, Taylor Swift has also been regarded as the woman with the most symmetrical face in the world and that her facial features are perfect. So um, there was a lot of controversy where Taylor Swift also had issues with the media and so forth, trying to get rid of the stigma that she was being favored by the neo Nazis as the ideal um, in their propaganda for the Aryan race. So neo-Nazis and so forth would use her on propaganda posters. Um, they would just use her basically as promoting the ideal um, Aryan race. Now, remember that there are still neo-Nazi groups throughout the world. Um, it is illegal for them to practice. So most of them work from an underground um, 
perspective, but obviously um, still very racially based, who believe themselves as being superior to other racial groups. And then obviously Taylor Swift um, <laughs> has quite an issue um, trying to um, get rid of this, this stigma with the um, neo-Nazis as well. Okay, then obviously the Nazis try to do away with people with disabilities. People with disabilities were also regarded as inferior and then also regarded as a huge financial burden on the state as such. So there you can see, um, let me just get my laser pointer again. There you can see there's a propaganda poster to um, So you are carrying the burden of these people on your shoulders, a financial burden. These people cannot help build Germany. They um, cannot reproduce. Um, people with disabilities only cost the government a lot of money. The 50,000 Reichmark. Um, so for 60 years or so forth, then obviously this will cost people a lot of money. So Nazi Germany also then promoted and implemented later euthanasia. Um, now euthanasia is the way they would um, start to kill these people with disabilities to avoid the burden they place on the rest of society. So they would sometimes um, promote this with the families, or sometimes just come and get these people from their homes, put them into hospitals and so forth, and then um, subject them to euthanasia. Um, killing people to, euthanasia is usually a term, killing people to end their suffering. Um, if you go today to Switzerland, um, for example, it might be legal, um, where people can decide they want to officially end their lives because they don't want to suffer because of cancer anymore or whatever. Um, but obviously this was done against the will of a lot of people in Germany, Nazi Germany, during that time where they were killed for being a financial burden on Germany society. And then obviously being inferior to the perfect race in Germany. Okay, then guys, please, if you have any questions, please quickly type them into the question box so that I can make sure that I answer you in, um, in a while. Then um, please, um, if you have not yet downloaded the handouts, please on the right hand side, you can download these PowerPoint presentations. It's available in Afrikaans as well as in English. So for the Afrikaans, it means, uh, um, if you have any other questions, to quickly type it in the question box. Then if you have any other questions that might not be subject related or you are not registered with IMPACT and you want more information, you are welcome to contact us on the email address provided here at info at impact.co.za. And then for the history learners registered with IMPACT, please make sure that you regularly check the resources and guided learning for the upload of further documentation and so forth that might help you with your studies. But for now, for this term, I need you to ask the grade 11 group to focus on pseudoscience and then with the two case studies of um, Aborigines in Australia, as well as the Nazi Germany. So if you then have the um, focus textbook or facility for Ken Anpuket, that you work systematically through the work and that you then also do some of the activities, it's important also to practice um, your source-based um, questions and activities in the textbook as well. Right, so any other questions, please make sure that you quickly type it in. And thank you for joining me for this session. I hope you learned something and that you enjoyed this. And then this is my 
end where I say goodbye. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.